I bring you greetings from Manhattan, New York. Uh, most of us aren't happy either. Maybe Wall Street accepted it. Um, thank you, Peg. Pleasure and honor to be here. You know, this greeting series is well known on the other coast. Um, so this is really wonderful to be here. Uh, following up on Karen's many lives, um, this book, Series India, uh, started as sort of a series of experimental poems, but I rapidly realized, oh my god, there's a story, and I don't do fiction in too many words. It just takes like so long. <laughs> um, and I flipped out because I don't do fiction, so I called all my friends and said, I have characters, I think there's a plot. <laughs> At any rate, I'm, I'm going to read some selections that I think have to do with out of time, because time and space are very fluid here. The sort of plot, though it's not clear and it has gaps and there are different alternative segments of it, is basically a young woman decides to go to India to get away from a mother who's difficult. And she figures all the answers will be in India. So her boyfriend follows her, they go to India, they run into other seekers and hippie travelers. And um, they also run into some of the Hindu pantheon. And stuff happens and then they go home, or she goes home. It's not quite clear to me why. And then there's some follow-up. So there's a temporal arc. Um, there's also layers of lives. When Buddha changed enlightenment, he remembered all his past lives and he used that as a way to teach. So there's intersections between the divine and the human. And I'll just, here we go. This is called The Crow. Once upon a time, when Brahmadatta was waiting in Benares, a crow pecked to death her fortunes and fled into the forest. And what to do with the bodies spread out along the muddy bed, the big leg pile on the locked off heads? The rest of the flock, dismayed, slept that evening by the river in the dark folds of its favorite bend. Nevertheless, there remained that nagging question the monsoon due in a day, and the emperor camped at Patna. Had he sent a regiment, it would have been too late. The next morning, the king of the crows, in the course of a progress through his dominions, arrived at the river and there heard the tale from the troubled flock. You were right, good crows, to neither punish nor pursue, he said. Every tree will be the one in which she did them in. See, here are their bangles, said our guide proudly. And sure enough, there they were, dim in the airless case, flanked by small cards with date, provenance, and bits of birth story. The sunlight spread across the pretty kitchen table. And here is Andrew, Sarah thought, putting down her book. Back from the market with another allegory. Arrivals. Stunned at immediate recalibration upon descent into stifling and acrid, holding lonely planet, passport, visa, Twizzlers, backpack, Bhagavad Gita, clearing immolation and other customs, hacking through dark thickets of limbs and torsos toward taxis, and in lieu of some inlaid alabaster arch, instead of a blue, multi-armed god on the hill, what they come upon curbside are Blake and Edwina, late of Nottingham, claiming to know reasonable hostels near a brilliant ashram, and might one factor in karmic implications and split the fair with that? <laughs> In the hills. It rains us silver into the gourd lane, and I disintegrate you there, thinning among birches. Coolly you rise and set myself on fire. We love myself sparingly, and we carry the loss of me to a last incline without flair or fondness whether we are early or beauty. Halfway through, this is 
called Kanpur Central Railway Station. Kanpur is in the state of Uttar Pradesh, that would be one of the ugliest cities in the world. The only thing it has going on with the south is four Brazilian people, is that it is where the major railway and highway lines, trunk road lines, roads, intersect. Halfway through our time there, it was late, and we were changing trains at Kanpur when we lost Leo, who had been with us ever since. It was not even that crowded when we got back with tea and sweets. He'd been watching the bags, which were where we left them, but he was not. It was late. Each of us, it turned out, was suddenly missing something. Veda, pen, pot, scarf, beads. It seemed when it went missing, trivial, but became over time of vast importance. The way Leo went from being quiet guy to lost guy late at night on the platform in Kanpur when we were changing trains. What was reliable and in place, what we had come to know, what, despite being so bizarre as to have been beyond imagining when we set out, had become familiar, had become familiar and turned on us, on us, not away from us. And Leo was the first to go. It began. Blake goes home. Blake had come, everybody goes to India with their agenda. Blake had come because he wanted to study some very bizarre tantric meditation rituals that took place at cremation grounds, primarily the followers or Shiva followers. So he'd been hanging out at cremation grounds and gotten ill. Not surprising. Blake goes home. Had it been a fiction, his refusals and hard-won denials, each with its thread, had his brute adherence to a bad translation, his matted hair and cracked skin been a fiction, had the burning ground with its holy well, its annual harvest of illumination and awful, been a fiction, had the holy men talking black oil, wood piles, and the answer become full in a fiction, then she would not have to answer, not have to step into this blunt something here on the tarmac to accept from this embassy attaché Blake's ashes. Years later, in Singapore, this is a consultant, years later in Singapore. In the evenings, it's gods in the mirrors, bronze and heavily armed, blocks, camo, Marlboros, Ray-Bans, the distinguishing iconography of the highly muscular. All these stories, she thought, and not a riveting past life or parable in sight. Let me go over this again for you, here at the Long Bar. Compared to that moment in Dorga's shrine, when in the dark we swore, no buffalo demon stepping down from an unmarked chopper matters. Later, I remembered looking up at our window that could never have opened out onto morning thick with Frangipani and Dunfire, nor offered in the middle distance a view of the old banyan by the well, whose branch threads reaching down, each one imagining itself the core of a new forest, are adorned with small shreds of cedar cloth printed with prayers, or the handwritten pleas of the soldier's wife, who, as 
as we were told upon our arrival, buried her bracelets one afternoon, and then walked behind her dark arms toward the banks of the river. In that life, Ananda, I was the soul.